before we even start, whoops, before we even start with this, we have to preface because we just have to, for those that are sitting in the back, obviously everyone that is coming through the southern border is not guilty of these things. It doesn't even mean that they are, but the act of crossing the border alone makes you a criminal because you're not supposed to do that. The problem is the current administration that we have is actually aiding and abetting in this crime. So that's what I'm saying. Just because you come over the border does not mean that you are one of these people. But, and again, it doesn't take a genius. It's just like one plus one equals two. It's basic common sense that if you open up your border to the entire world, you're going to get some not great people. And it's also no secret that, yeah, there are a lot of people that want to do harm to Americans. There are a lot of people that want to do harm to America. That's not a new concept. It never has been. So I don't understand why people are so retarded when it comes to the border. If you don't have a border, you don't have a... Why is that so difficult? Where did you hit your head? I don't understand. How is this partisan? Anywho, um, of the people that came through... So this was going around today. This is an an official letter from ICE and what they're saying is of the 7 million people that we know about, those are just that we know about, I would estimate that probably like 20 million people came through during this administration. But obviously a lot of them are gotaways so we're not going to have numbers. Of the 7 million that are currently having their cases processed right now, um, over 600,000 have criminal histories. 13 K, 13,000 people that have come through and are being processed have been actually convicted of offing someone. 16,000 have a history of SA. And at least 1,800 are actually facing charges, you know, of the serious kind. I'm going to tell you, if you've been with me for a while, you might have heard this story before, but this is one of the reasons when I started changing up what I was talking about online and what I was making my videos about, I was obviously getting more political, but one of the reasons since that time, like one of my main things that I've been focused on and talking about and one of the main things that I have felt so urgent about is our border because I knew it was going to be weaponized as soon as the Biden administration took over. I had seen it, all the writing in the sand, and the reason it's so important to me personally is because of an experience that I had when I was really, really young. And I'm actually thankful that I had this experience because it opened my eyes to something that I would have had no idea about. So my very first job out of college, I worked at an acute care state-run psychiatric hospital for children and adolescents. I worked with the teenagers. Um, Because we were acute care, basically that means that we would get kids like in crisis, stabilize them, send them back out. Most of our kids probably attempted, you know, um, they were having issues in school, like serious mental health issues. And because we were a state-run hospital, we're a publicly funded place, uh, you can't turn anyone away, even if they're not a legal immigrant. So I'd already worked there for like a year and a half and then one day we get a new intake. And when we get an intake, because we're an emergency center, you know about it maybe like when they're on the way there. So you don't have that much time to prepare. And like I said, we take everyone. So we got this kid who was in the country illegally. And the only thing that we knew about him is what he told us. He told us that he was 17 years old. Uh, He was from Mexico. We knew his name. That is all the information that we had on him. The whole time he was with us, I think it was a matter of like, I want to say like two weeks. I can't really remember. But the whole time he was there, I just, something rubbed me the wrong way about him. I've obviously, like I've worked with a lot of mental illness. I had trained with it at that point in time. So I had worked with people that committed murder before. So I wasn't like scared of people. But there was something about him that just, it was very quiet. It was very sinister. And I just did not feel safe around him. And I didn't feel safe around him. We actually had a few 14-year-old girls on the unit at the time. So you would typically have 15 to 17 but we actually had a few 14 there were two of them and he would pay special interest in that like they had sort of formed like 
a little click almost. So anytime I was working, I was just all up in their business. I didn't like it. I didn't, there was something about him that was off. Anyway, long story short, he um, kind of got in all the kids' heads, convinced them to riot one night. This is what kids do and people do when you're in jail or in a facility like this they riot so basically that means they'll after bedtime they'll all come out of the rooms at the same time and create chaos and I don't know maybe like go after staff or try to run away whatever but he got all of them to do that and it was terrifying because we happen to have some really big really violent kids at this time so in an unprecedented move we had to call the cops to get this kid removed there was a lot of other stuff that happened but that's not really the point of the story the point of the story is this Once he was gone, we started getting more information about him. And now knowing what I know, I wonder if that was the Interpol um, information coming through. So what we found, and this was a long time ago, you guys, way before our border was such a big issue, a while ago, when we weren't as poor as as we are right now. Uh, What we found is that he was actually um, a legal immigrant from Mexico. That part was right. He was escaping a murder charge. And we had a uh, reason, I believe he was, he was over 18, over 18, escaping a murder charge. And I also remember like after he left, he got taken out by police. He wasn't coming back, um, which you never do at a facility like that. You're equipped to deal with things, but there were some other circumstances happening, uh, found out. And, and then he got transferred to a facility in Florida. I remember learning that. And I just remember being there like 20 years old, like not knowing much about anything, And I'm like, how is he in this country? And how is he still here? I remember thinking that. Um, And that's the thing, because when people are coming over the border, you have no way to know who they are. All you have is their word to tell you. And we are literally a sanctuary country. Not only are we a sanctuary for the tired, the poor, and the hungry. Sure, that's who's coming. We're a sanctuary now for the world's criminals. You're escaping a charge? Come over the border. We're going to let you in. And you know what else? We also have police that won't talk to ICE. So you can commit crimes here and we'll do everything we can to make sure we protect you and keep you here. Have we lost our damn minds? And also, um, what about all these, the National Guard, the Border Patrol agents, all of these people involved, all the contractors, everyone involved? How do any of you, at the end of the day, look at yourself in the mirror? I have a family to feed. Well, guess what? There are parents that don't have their children. A mom in Texas just lost her entire life, her 12-year-old little girl. But I have a family to feed. So feeding your family, you're just willing to sacrifice everyone, screw everyone else. And by the way, I lost work. I lost friends. We're all be, we're all going to be okay. And there are people out there that will protect you right now. Because no one's coming. Why aren't there more whistleblowers? Where are the men? And I'm tired of the excuse on following orders. How many people have to die until you following orders is not an excuse anymore? It's just like, I used to think that most people in the world were good. And I kind of believe that. No, I feel like most people in the world are, you You throw a few dollar signs in their face and they'll just lose all their morals. Because this is wrong. It is so wrong. And the Biden administration, everyone knows. They're not stupid. They know what's coming over the border. They don't care. Because whatever they do here to whoever, whether it's me, whether it's you or your family, you're just collateral damage. All you are to our government right now is an ATM and a vote. And as soon as you don't give them what they want, your vote and your money, they will import people and you may or may not make it out alive. I don't know how much more of this I can take. (laughs) I was literally just earlier today listening to this woman from Springfield, Ohio, talking about a a good friend of hers who lived in this amazing rental property for about six years, paid $600 a month. She was kicked out of her apartment because some Haitians came in and offered $1,800. My parents rent because they're just, they're older. They're like, they don't need to own a home right now. And they already suffered through their financial crisis. But I'm like, that could be my mom. That could be my parent. That would never happen because they actually have a decent landlord who has morals. But this is personal. How is this not personal to every single person, regardless of your politics? Mm. 